Today we're going to talk about passwords in PowerShell. If you're like most people, you've got them all right there in Notepad and plain text. Whenever you're using your PowerShell scripts, you're either cutting and pasting or just storing them there in plain. So what I want to do in today's video is show you some of the good ways to do it and the better ways to do it so that your passwords are a little bit safer at night. All right, but first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys. And in today's show, we're gonna jump in and look at passwords in PowerShell. We're gonna look at how to store them in plain text. Bad idea, but we're gonna look at how to do it. We're gonna look at how to prompt for passwords every time you need to use them. Then we're gonna look at how you might do it in a more secure manner. So we're gonna look at encrypting them in a local file. And then finally, we're gonna end with using the Windows Credential Manager and how we can integrate that into our process. The focus of most of the scripts will be using it for uh, SharePoint Online. But all the techniques that we're going to discuss here can be used for any of uh, your PowerShell scripts where you might be storing uh, passwords today. So should be fun. Let's just switch over to my desktop and get started. All right, so my desktop here is a Windows 8.1 machine that I built just for these exercises. Um, I've installed the Windows Management Framework 5.1, and I've also installed the uh, PS Readline utility for PowerShell. So if you're not familiar with those tools, they just kind of make get your PowerShell up to the latest and greatest, and then makes it a little easier to use because it's going to color code my commandlets. If you're not familiar with that, there is a video uh, linked down below that has the step-by-step uh, -step how to get that installed, but I'm gonna assume you've already done that. So the first thing I'll do is I will just go ahead and hit start, and I'm gonna type in PowerShell. And then what we're gonna do is we need to run as administrator, right? So we're gonna right click, we're gonna say run as administrator. Yes to the UAC prompt. And so then now that PowerShell is up and running, uh, the first thing I want you guys to do is make sure that you're gonna do a start dash transcript, right, using tab complete there to finish it. But this is just a good idea that this gives us that running history of everything that we've done. Speaking of the history, all of the PowerShell that I'm gonna show you today, I'll make that available via a uh, download link. So it's free, you'll just have to give me your email address. So, you know, the bold zebras can uh, spam you once a month if you do it. But that way you don't have to kind of type all this uh, PowerShell in, especially if you're having any boo-boos. So if you want that, the link is down below to get there. Okay, so here we are. We'll clear off our screen. And so when it comes to passwords, probably the most common thing that I see is people using the script that has, you know, just the variable equals username, right? So something like this. So it'd say, you know, dollar sign username equals, and then there's our account. And then I would have another line that says dollar sign PW equals my password. Maybe I board it out, maybe I don't. We'll see what happens. So that gets those two into a variable. Once those are in a variable, what I would do then is I would need to convert it to a secure string. So generally speaking, PowerShell won't let you use passwords unless they're a secure string, but they give you a function convert to dash secure string to uh, put that in there. And you can see I have to use the force parameter. It says, yes, I really want to change that. And so right now, if I typed in dollar sign SP, you'd see that it just says, hey, it's a secure string. It's not going to show it to me. Whereas if I was to type in dollar sign PW, it would show me the plain text password that I put in. Okay? So now I've got a dollar sign UN with my username, dollar sign SP with the secure password. And so then what I'll often do is I'll then have to convert those to an actual credential. So then you would run a line like this, right? Dollar sign plain cred, I just made up a name, plain cred, equals new object system.management.automation.ps credential dash argument list uh, dollar sign un comma dollar sign sp. So if we do that, that is now created as a credential object with that username and password safely stored in it. So if I wanted to connect to like my SharePoint online account, I could do connect uh, dash msol service dash credential plain cred, hit enter that's gonna connect us to Office 365. If you don't have the Office 365 stuff installed and you need to, I also have a video for that linked down below. And remember, I'm showing this in the context of uh, Office 365 or the SharePoint Online stuff, but you could be doing it for different reasons. So don't, uh, don't get hung up on the fact that I'm using Office 365 for all my examples. But I did connect MSOL service. And so then the last thing I would do here real quick is just a get MSOL user and so then that way we'll see the users get listed. And so we know that I successfully authenticated out um, to Office 365 using a plain text password. 
So that's probably A, the most common way that I see people use usernames and passwords. They just put them right there in plain text in their scripts. But B, it's the least secure possible way because anyone looking over your shoulder could see the uh, password is right there in plain text. So I don't want you to do that way, but I know a lot of you do, so I want to kind of cover what was going on with that methodology. Let's clear our screen. So the second way that you could do it, and this is a way that I've shown in the uh, most of the, the previous videos that I've done, is to use the PowerShell commandlet get credential. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run dollar sign ask cred. So I'm going to create a variable called ask cred, and I'm going to say equals get credential. When I do that, I'll get a pop-up box, and so for that pop-up box, then I can type in the username and password. So this is a good methodology because it is secure. I'm not storing this stuff, but it is annoying that you have to put it in there. And especially if you're trying to do automated scripts and things like that, it, it gets to be kind of a cumbersome. If you gotta, you know, type in the username and password for your automated scripts, not really automated at that point. Uh, but once we've done something like that, right now, if I do, if I do a friend connect msol service, and then dash credential, and I do dollar sign ask cred. Almost sound like I said a bad word there. I didn't. So that works, right? And then we do get msol user. And so you can see that methodology works. That's the one that I've shown in all my other videos that I've done with the PowerShell online stuff and the Azure stuff, uh, just different ways of scripting. And speaking of Azure though, um, Azure uses a different credential set than the standard PowerShell credentials. So it's actually a whole different topic. Uh, so this will not apply to if you're trying to use lo uh, login Azure RM accounts. Uh, that's not going to work for this one. There's a different uh, methodology for that, and there'll be a link down below for better reading or another video on that, depending on what I come up with. So, so that's the second way to do credentials, right? It's good, it's secure, but it's not. It's kind of cumbersome because you had to manually do it. So the third methodology we're going to look at here is using. Um, a blog post that my buddy Todd Clint wrote, and you know it's written on the internet about hundred different from hundred different people, hundred different ways. But in his script, what he does is he shows you how to create a local file on your file system that stores the username and password. And I would give this a decent amount of security, right? Because what we're going to see as we work through this process is it's going to save the username and password to a file, and the password will be encrypted, uh, hashed might be a better way of putting it. Uh, the password will be in a more secure fashion. And uh, that file that stores these in can't readily be used on another system. It's tied to the account that you used to create the file with. So that makes it a little more secure. Now the bad news is I'm guessing with a little bit of poking around the internet, you could probably figure out how to reverse engineer all of it. But generally speaking, when you think about security, we're trying to make it so that someone doesn't accidentally discover the password. And then we know if someone goes and does this process, they would be maliciously hacking your, your computer to get this file and then to decrypt it. So, you know, not going to stop that person from getting in with this methodology, but we are going to stop the uh, the casual looky-loo person. So that's what we're probably after anyway. So to do this methodology, we're going to run through a few steps here. And so the first one is, is we're going to create the file. And before I create the file, I'm going to make us, make us a folder, just so we can see there's no shenanigans. So here on the C drive, I'm going to create a new folder called safe. Right, I could have done this with PowerShell. I could have done uh, MD for make directory and then the C colon safe, but I don't know. Visuals are sometimes easier. So I made us a folder called safe. There's nothing in it. And so we're going to paste in here. And so the first step in this process, right, the first time we have to give it the credentials so that we can, uh, you know, store those securely. So let me type in my username here, or actually cut and paste my username because I'm too lazy to type this big long thing in. This is the real reason I want to modify, or uh, I want to be able to automate all this stuff. Is that username and password is just too long for me. Okay, so I took right. So dollar sign credentials equals gets credentials. So we put the values that we just typed in into here, and then dollar sign file name equals uh, c colon safe secret file dot text. So we're going to store it in that uh, particular file, and so what we're going to do is credentials take the that object and pipe it over to export uh, cli xml. And then path is a file name, so we'll hit enter. And so when we do that, we can see we get a secret file here on the file system. If we double click on it, you can see there's a username in plain text, and here's the password. That is not what I typed in, right? I typed in like 10 characters, and this is, I don't know, 100, hundreds? I don't know, a whole bunch of characters, because that was that process of hashing it. Um, so it's been stored on machine. It's the secret file. Yay. So we'll close that. We'll close this. 
So then now in my script to use that particular uh, file, what I can do is I just need this little chunk of PowerShell. So I put this in all my files uh, to take advantage of it. So cred path equals the location of the file. And then file creds is import cli XML path cred path. So go get that file uh, and import the uh, cli XML stuff. And that's going to decrypt it as long as you're on this machine using the same user account. If I was to take that secret file.txt file and go dump it on my server and log in with a different account, it's not going to work. It's going to be like, eh, doesn't, uh, does not compute. So this is where you get that little bit of security because it does, this file is now tied to the account that I went ahead and created this as. So that's all done. And then now let's try out our uh, SharePoint Online stuff using that methodology. So connect MSL service credential file cred and get MSOL user. Boom. So let's scroll back up here. So this is a great one, right? If you're just trying to figure out, you know, a simple way to get stuff into a text file so you can automate your passwords, this is probably the simplest of the methodologies. You get a little bit of security, not, a, not, not foolproof, but a little bit. Now also keep in mind, if you were going to do this for a script, you're going to automate. So you want to do, you know, run the Windows task every, 4 every day at 4 a.m. to back up some stuff using PowerShell, and you want to store the password this way, you're either going to need to run that Windows task as the same account that you created this secret file as, or no, you just have to do that, right? So you, you'd go in and change the Windows task to be that. If you wanted the Windows task to run as a service account, then you'd need to log into the system one time um, as that service account and create the secret file with that uh, particular uh, account so that it would have access when it was running as that account for your timer job every night. So just keep that in mind. That is an important little uh, caveat to this methodology. Right, but that's a good one. I really like that one. Kudos to Todd uh, for you know documenting that for us. All right, so it's clear screen. So the last one here I want to talk about. This is one that I've been using um, very recently. I've, this is kind of the one I was looking for. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it, and I finally tripped over it. I figured out this problem, and that's what kind of prompted me to go ahead and make this video. In between watching all my cat dog, cat and dog videos, I watched the puppy bowl. Hopefully, you guys got to watch the puppy puppy bowl. My kids are big fans, so I. Watching the puppy bowl, I got this all solved, and this is what we got. And so with this methodology we're going to do is we're going to use the Windows Credential Manager. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Start, and I'm going to type in Credential Manager. And I am told that this is part available on Windows 7. I've confirmed it's on Windows 8 and Windows 10, so I don't think it should be anything, for, anything surprising for anyone. But so when I'm in Credential Manager here, what you want to do is you want to go to Windows Credentials, and I'm going to say I want to add a generic credential. And it's like, hey, what is the internet or network address? So I'm not going to actually demo, give it a name. And I'm going to call it O365, right? So O for Office and 365. And then for my username here, I'm going to put in the same username we've been using, just like that. And then for the password, I will type in my password. No peeking, guys. I know you were trying to steal my password. But OK. And so then now that has been stored in my local Windows Credential Manager. So that information is available. Now, unfortunately, to take advantage of the uh, components of Credential Manager, there's not built-in PowerShell. So I've had to go and find a third-party way to do that. It, it's a free one. It's out there on uh, the PS Gallery. But to install that, you're going to need to um, go out and get Credential Manager. The good news is, is PowerShell makes this pretty easy. I'm going to go to my PowerShell window. All right, so we're going to run the line install module-name credential manager and hit enter. So after a few seconds here, I'm getting prompted, hey, this is an untrusted repository. Are you sure you want to install from there? Well, everything you read on the internet is true, so of course you do. So we're going to type in yes and hit enter. Also, if this is your first time installing a module remotely, you might get prompted, do you want to install the latest versions of NUGET? Uh, that's the package handler that pulls this stuff down. You want to say yes to that also if you got prompted for that. Um, we've covered some of that in some of the other videos, so I don't want to harp, harp on it too much here. But the other thing to keep in mind is you might, if you're having problems with these remote scripts, you might want to check your execution policy, right? So get execution policy. You need to be running remote sign. If you do get execution policy and it says restricted, uh, a lot of these remote uh, scripts aren't going to work. And so if it was restricted, then you would just do set execution policy remote sign just like that. It would warn you, are you sure you want to change it? And yes, you would. So that's a quick little trick there. All right, but so now that we've installed the credential manager utility off of PS Gallery. I'll clear my screen off. And so the great command, it only comes with like four or five commandlets. 
Um, and if you wanted to see those, you could type in get module or sorry, get command dash module um, credential manager. And so it oh, comes with four commands. So get store credential, get strong password, new store credential, and remove store credential. So what we're going to take advantage of is the uh, get stored credential. Because now what I want to do, so now we have that available to us, we'll clear our screen off again, is we'll paste over here. So we'll say manage credentials equals get stored credential dash target 0365, right? 0365 being the credential that we just created over in the uh, uh, credential manager, right? So we hit enter there. So that puts that value there. And if I did everything correctly, we should now be able to do connect MSOL service credential. Oh, it should be manage cred, not ask cred. So we'll do that again. Manage cred. All right, that looks like that connected. And then we will do um, get MSOL user just to make sure. And so that got all of our users. So there's a great methodology, right? Now we know that the username and password that I have access to is stored in the um, credential store, so I know it's secure. I know that someone can't just you know Google for five minutes on how to hack that and get that password out of there. So that's a pretty good method for getting passwords, storing them, and using them, whether it be for service accounts or for connecting to your online resources or things like that. And to feel good that it is all uh, taken care of. The other nice thing about using Credential Manager um, is that the um, PNP, right, the uh, Patterns and Practices PowerShell that there's a video for down below if you haven't used before, but that's the main thing I use when working with SharePoint Online. It natively uh, supports the uh, Credential Manager, so you don't have to use that add-on we did, but if I do this script right here, connect to the Patterns and Practice Online, right, so connect-pnp-online-url, that's the URL to my SharePoint tenant, and then dash credential 0365, that being the thing we just did in Credential Manager. They have a built-in methodology for using Credential Manager, so you don't need the third-party tool. But now we know how to use Credential Manager both for our Patterns and Practices PowerShell and for our um, SharePoint Online, you know, getting to our Azure account or MSL services and things. So it's a pretty handy way to go. So. I think that about wraps it up. Hopefully this helps you guys understand kind of the different options you have around passwords, how you should be managing them, you know, shows you the evil way of doing it on uh, in, in plain text. If that's what you really need to do, it's what you need to do. But uh, at least I've shown you the right ways and the wrong ways of how to do all this. Um, as always, if you like what you see here, you know, give me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. You know, there's lots of uh, PowerShell videos out here. And if you need any help with this, leave a comment below. If you check the other videos, I get lots of questions, and I always try to answer them and help people work through their problems. But sometimes if it's a little more than just some answers on uh, online, I can also do some consulting with you through Bold Zebras. And, of course, you can always tweet me at Shane's Cows. So thanks, and have a great day.